Right, thank you for joining the Average Golfer in my quest to find out and fully understand why average golfers like me try and make this game just as difficult as we possibly can. Right, okay, let's start off with some comments down below. I want some feedback. You've bought a set of irons, but how many of you have got the wedges that match the irons? Did you go four to pitching wedge? Did you go four through to gap wedge? Did you get the wedges that match the iron set when you went out and bought? So let me explain what I'm on about. You buy yourself a set of M6 irons. Why did you not go and buy the pitching wedge, the gap wedge, the lob wedge in those M6 irons? Because they're all available now. They all make the set right the way through. And speaking to manufacturers, I know that you're not doing that. Most sets that are ordered are four through to pitching wedge. And then somebody will go and buy their wedges from a totally different brand. Nothing to do with matching up to the set of the irons that you've got. You might buy yourself a Callaway Mac Daddy. What's that, a Mizuno S18, a tailor-made mill grind, a Titleist SM7. And these wedges are often a far cry from what you've just gone and got fit for, which is a game improvement type iron, plenty of assistance, plenty of forgiveness. So why is it with wedges we decide to go a completely different route? Understanding the mentality of an average golfer is one that I'm struggling with, and I'm including myself, obviously, in that bracket. The more videos I do, the more I realize that uh, we try and make this game a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. And we try to go down options that are perhaps the norm, what's recognized. So let's say, for example, one of the biggest selling wedges are these SM wedges from Titleist. It's been fantastic. I would imagine, again, don't know the numbers, one of the biggest selling wedges out there in the world right now. And a lot of us will be drawn towards them for exact that same reason. It's a thin top line, no mass in it wouldn't imagine a great deal of assistance. And maybe you don't need a great deal of assistance with wedge shots, who knows? But what I do know is that these will be a far cry from many of the reasons that you buy a game improvement club, for example. Like I said, forgiveness, a bit of bulk, a bit of confidence at address. All of a sudden, when we go to choose our wedges, we go for a whole different profile, one that we say that sends us away from P760s, for example, from TaylorMade. You wouldn't choose to game an iron like this, so why would you choose to game a wedge? So the first one I'm going to pick up, and the idea of this video, I'm going to show you a wedge that I would never take a second glance at on the shelf. I'm being perfectly honest with you. I would just walk away from it. It would not be something that I would look at. However, based on last week's video, I started asking myself a few questions and think, Anne, what are you doing? Maybe you should just open your mind up a little bit and let's have a look at what makes the game gives us as much help as we can get let's say and it was interesting the comments in the last video because a lot of people um, almost go the opposite way they choose to pick a club that makes them have to improve to find a better strike and I understand that I understand the logic and don't forget in these videos this isn't a suggestion that people should go out and do it this is just simply asking the question and I'm asking the question with wedges this morning and when I seen the wedge that I'm going to reveal very very shortly I thought, right, okay, well, we'll give it a go. I give it a go, and once again, the ball just half a swing, picks it up nice and easy, goes out there. And again, it isn't in my bag, and more importantly, it would never get a chance of going in my bag because I'd take one look at it and I'd walk away. I can't understand that. I think it's time for the big reveal. Let's not keep you hanging on too long because I want to talk about why I don't choose this product rather than keeping it a secret as to what it is. And it's the Cleveland CBX wedge. Now, Roger Cleveland has a fantastic reputation for building wedges. I'm not even sure whether he uh, was still around when this one was put together, whether or not it is idea or not, I'm not too sure. But the CBX wedge is something that I would walk past on the shelf and not pay any attention to whatsoever. And why is that? What's wrong? What's wrong with the mentality? Well, first of all, let me just get that off to camera. That's a fairly wide sole plate. I'm not sure whether we can get this. Let's see if we can. No, that's going to focus on my head. There you go. 
that's a fairly thick top line. In fact, in terms of mass, overall mass, in terms of a club head profile, I would say it's probably one of the biggest wedges that I've ever seen. So straight away, I would look at it and it's, it's got no finesse. It's got, um, it's everything that I would dislike in a golf club. But, and there's a massive but here. Why am I drawn to thin clubs like the SM7s, thin top lines, thin soles, very little forgiveness in terms of a wedge itself. Why would I be drawn to that when I'm an average golfer? I'm an average golfer, I want help. So surely I should be looking at this CBX. It's incredible in terms of performance. It's incredibly easy to hit. They've got every loft available, all the different bounces available. And I can't understand why as average golfers we keep on turning our noses up at clubs that are potentially, who's heard of the CBX? Who has heard of this golf club before? Who's considered it? Who's hit it? Who you out there would do exactly the same as what I've just said? Who would look at that club and say, well, I'll tell you what, I ain't playing them because I've never heard a great deal about it. It looks too bulky and I'm going back to me tight this left seven seconds. on this video is this is not a review of CBX wedges this is that's not the point this is a review of the mentality of average golfers out there I'm trying to understand and get inside the psyche of an average golfer inside of my head inside of what's making me buy the clubs that I buy and is it for the right reasons Now I've just come out onto the uh, par 3 course we've got here at 4 Golf just to try this from a couple of different lies and I think the important thing to remember about this video, like I said earlier on, this isn't a review of the CBX and at no point am I suggesting that you should all go out and buy CBX wedges. The point that I'm trying to make in these videos is that maybe it's just all this about the mentality as to why we buy clubs as average golfers and, and getting into a mindset that egos fall away a little bit and we look at more clubs like this not exactly this but maybe like this that can do so much more for ultimately allowing us to score better in and around the golf course this is what I've got out here there's a 56 wedge dead easy to pick up off that turf I'm going to try some out the rough and a few chip and runs and a few bits and bobs with it because they're the kind of things the questions that you'd ask is it is it playable enough from a number of different situations and uh, like I said I'll try that next out on this little par 3 course Well, that was pretty nestled down and absolutely popped up and got out there nice and easy. Now, as many of you skilled players out there who like to play a wedge in a variety of different ways, open a club face up and maybe shut it down a little bit as well. But for most of us average golfers out there, the main aim of using the wedge is we're always looking to get the ball airborne. Get the ball up in the air, out of some difficult situations, carry some bunkers, carry some trouble. And I think that the CBX does exactly that. It's um, a typical example of a club that would be suited to probably more golfers than it wouldn't. I would reckon and I'd guesstimate that seven out of 10 golfers would be better suited to this, that's a bold statement isn't it? <laughs> Nothing scientific in that one. Better suited to this type of wedge than the ones you've currently got in your bag. But like I said, that's a bit of a bold statement. The purpose of these videos is never to tell anybody what to buy. I'm in no position to do that and I'm no position in uh, ad, uh, the ability to advise anybody. I am an average golfer after all. But the one thing that this video and the last one that I did has certainly opened my eyes. The more testing that I do over the last few years, I just wonder, are there easier options out there? And for me personally, honestly, I thought about this video last week when I looked at the Big Bertha Irons and uh, I started this in this club and bringing it out there, just a few chips on the on this uh, par 3 course. Honestly, it's changed my whole idea and I'm going to say there's every chance that I'm going to put these in my bag. 
I am so surprised and impressed at just the ease of use and I am maybe, maybe I can drop that ego, maybe my mentality as an average golfer will be put some stuff in your bag that helps you play this game just a little bit better. Uh, and as I say, there's lots of you out there that are all about technique and swing, and yes, I totally agree, it ain't gonna make my swing any better, uh, but it just might help me from the odd situation. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. I hope it made sense. I hope it asked some questions because that's all these videos are intended to do. Ask some questions of your mentality, of my mentality, and together, hopefully, we make this game just a little bit easier for when we go out there on the fairways. Thanks for watching. Hit the thumbs up. Plenty of comments down below, as ever. I love all that bit. And uh, I'm going to carry on a bit more practicing and uh, see if I can get a deal on these Cleveland CBX wedges, I think.